Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, <laughs> I was a um, little bit, I'm a little bit late. I know. Well, if you're new here, just know that um, uh, I'm really glad that you're here. The mic is on. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm glad you're here. And I, do, I don't start right at the top of the hour. Um, we do this show at least three times a week. Um, Saturday, uh, sorry, there was a lot going on. Everything will become clear. I'll tell you what's going on. Um, 11 a.m. Tuesday and Thursday and Saturdays at four, all of those central time. And I, I never come on right at the top of that hour because uh, people's notifications take a little time to get to them. Um, you know, people need a minute. I need a minute. I needed a few more minutes than I usually take. So usually I try to get uh, about 10 minutes after the hour to turn on the camera and go live. Um, but today I was a little bit late because there's just, I mean, the content, the content that I have for y'all tonight, because it's 10 p.m. here uh, in London. And the content that I have for you, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. I, I'm excited to share it with you. I'm always excited to share the stuff, but there's something exciting uh, tonight that is, is, I mean, I don't know. It's a gift, man. It's just always a gift with the quilt content. I was looking for something. I mean, if you notice the title of this show is the Carter family, the Carter family, as in Ma Maybell, Sarah, June, Johnny Cash, eventually, you know, there's quilts in everything, right? There's quilts in everything. And let me just, let me just take it back for a second because the, I know there are new people here because this is the fourth time I think, uh, that I'm multi-streaming to YouTube and Twitch. So that's very exciting. And one of the things that I was trying to do was to get, Hey, Ivana. Oh, I'm going to say hi to everybody in just a second. One of the things that I needed to do was get to do my best to get the YouTube chat in front of me. And I think we did it, but <laughs> I was, I was just about right on, right on my little mark when I realized, oh, I got to shut the door. Um, I realized that when Eric and I tested this out yesterday, we put in like someone else's chat, like some gamers, like, I don't know. We tested it and I was like, I think, I think that gamers chat is still, would, would still be the one that appears, you know, I think it would have been. And there was like ads for webcam girls. I mean, it just, it wasn't going to work. It just wasn't going to work. Not this show. That's for Quilt Nerd After Dark. Uh, just kidding. Um, so yeah, so I had to fix that, you know, it's good that I fixed that. So anyway, yeah, this is an exciting, exciting day because uh, there's more possibility that I will be able to see some YouTube chat happening. I don't know yet if uh, I'll be able to combine these things. I don't know. This is all new to me. Um, to you, to many of you, it's new also. Uh, most of us who have been in the Twitch crew uh, for the past few months, I think my first stream, I think my first like official stream was August. So it's only been a few months. And those of my peeps, my original quilt nerds, um, we were all new to Twitch. Like Twitch is, was completely new. We didn't really know much about it uh, at all before this show started. Um, but I dig it. I'm having a blast. Getting it on YouTube at the same time is very exciting. But that's new now, too. So all of this is fascinating. <laughs> I know the technical requirements and the details and things. But oh, I almost forgot. I'm working, so I, you get to have a trailer, a one minute like trailer for your channel, okay, on Twitch, one minute, it's not very long. And all day today I worked on my, my trailer and I wanna show it to you all. It's not finished, it's not finished, but it's getting there, it's getting pretty close. So I'm gonna show you that. Um, I'm gonna show you that, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about the Carter family. Oh my God, one of the reasons tonight is so exciting is because this is, the first, maybe the first show where my quilt nerds, my quilt nerds, you have a task. I, I would like to, I would like to put it to you, you know, to help me find 
something that we'll get to, okay? Um, so if you're new here, I want to tell you what this is about and, and welcome you. I think I did that already. My name's Mary. Um, I'm curious about, about everything. I'm curious about the whole world out there. Um, and I have the fortune, the good fortune to have quilts in my life, right? And for a long time, I didn't really, I mean, I don't know. I grew up in a family where there were quilts everywhere and that was fine. And then I started making them when I was like in my late twenties and that was fine. But then I realized that quilts are so much more, right? Than just pretty blankets. And I, I was looking for inspiration uh, for a quilt one day years ago. And I like looked in this book of, of old quilts, you know, and quilts are, quilts are not old. The ladies on your screen, I always start the show with a different picture behind me. I have a green screen because I'm on Twitch. Um, so I start with a different picture. Usually it's a quilt and we, we start sort of the quilt content with that. But today it's a, it's a picture of, of people in quilts. So we get to that. But, but quilts, you know, they're made by all kinds of people, rich people, poor people, black people, white people, young people, old people. Um, and so if you stick around and watch this show, you will totally see that. But anyway, I was looking at this book of, you know, antique quilts or something. And, and I realized that quilt history and, um, and quilt culture, it, it opens doors to the whole world. Um, questions of art and philosophy and history and women's history and gender study. I mean, whatever you want to look at, you know, there's a quilt in there. And if you trace a quilt back to its source, if you look for quilts, I don't know, say in the Carter family, then all of a sudden you find yourself learning about American folk music and you, you find yourself learning about, you know, Tennessee in the 19... 20s, you know, it's all there and a quilt leads the way. So, so I lecture about quilts. I've been a magazine editor for a long time. Uh, I stepped down from my latest magazine gig because I wanted to do different stuff, you know, like this. And so this show is basically me nerding out and doing research. Like it's a very active hosted kind of research, but basically I was tired of finding all this cool by myself. And I wanted to share it with people because I can lecture, I can give my lectures, that's cool. But I can only share a little bit in a lecture, you know? So this is different. This is not a lecture. I do not have things prepared like I would have in a lecture or a presentation. But I get stuff together. I like get some different stuff together to look at with you. So some of the stuff, I mean, I'm excited to tell you what I know about this Carter family thing, but I don't know so much about it because I've saved it back to share with you and we'll learn together, figure this out together. I mean, we'll learn together. We learn things, but it's not about like, there's no quiz, you know, we just, we just dig quilts, man. And somebody recently asked about like, what was like the, the drug culture of the sixties? Like what was the impact of that on, on quilts, you know? And I was like, oh, geez, I don't know. Well, guess what? <sighs> well, just, well, I, I found some uh, th there. That's, that's in tonight's show too, a little bit. And it has to do with the Carter family, not because the Carter family was geeked out on goofballs or anything, but you'll see. Okay. You'll see. And I'll see. And I'm excited. I am exhausted because I was editing all day, but then I found this thing and it, anyway, I'm fine. I'm doing great. So anyway, I'm glad you're here and uh, I've got my Coke Zero here. I don't know. I'm drinking soda again. You know, do you ever like have a habit that's like not great and you just like get rid of it. And then one day you're like drinking diet soda again. That's where I'm at. Hmm. Okay, um, so yeah, the trailer, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the trailer, I think, yeah, but not right away, yeah. but I'll show you that. Um, what else do we have to say? We have a Discord, we'll talk about that at a certain point. I need to say, <laughs> oh, oh man, I, just, I keep looking down when Yovana says something, like I'm like m drawn to you, Yovana, I'm just like, and you think you, you have things you need to state. You're paying me very nice compliments. I don't need to read all of that, but thank you very much. You know, if I look made up or kempt, it's because I'm tired. 
And you know, if you're really tired, you just gotta act as if. And I was like, Fonz, I laid down to take a nap. I was like, this isn't happening. It was like nine o'clock. I can't, I can't rest. I can't rest, I got a show to do. So I was like, Eric, no. I washed my face, brushed my teeth, gave my hair a lick, as my grandma would say. Honey, give you a hair a lick. She was from Mississippi. And you know, so thank you very much, Ivana. But I like your, the third thing you state is, you say, I need to once again, thank you for this community. And uh, it's been a stressful last few days and this has been the rainbow I needed. Girl, just settle in. And I mean, talk about rainbows. We're gonna, we're gonna see some rainbows. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to get, get what you need, you know, in every way, but especially now, you know, I've got crisps. I always do, I have to have them. Get yourself some, get yourself some crisps. I'm really glad you're here, always. Um, so now I'm gonna say hi to everybody and then we'll, you know, get we'll get into this biz. Um, Nancy, hello. God, these people, these people are great. You'll know, you'll, you'll, you'll get there, you'll get there. Oh, and then I gotta look at the YouTube chat, oh Lord. Oh man, okay, okay, I can't, I can't dawdle now. Okay, so I'm gonna say a big hi and I love you too. Susan R. Michael, Fiendor, got that music going for me, thank you. Val and Carol, and, and, oh yeah, okay, yeah, Val's like, I saw the title, immediately thought of June Carter and Johnny Cash. Yeah, yeah. hey Faith, the write down is here, Pam Priest is here, Robin's Nest. I am so ready to laugh, learn, and get some Christmas projects done. Yes. By the way, I mean, people who aren't quilt people watch this show. Some of them lurk. Some of them say hello. We've met some of them. Um, and you can lurk. That's totally cool. If you want to chat, you got to be cool. If you're not cool, we got to block you. It's lame. It sucks. So don't don't be that way. Um, and and but, but a great thing to do if you're a quilt person is to turn this show on. Uh, I'm so, man woman person that's that's i mean that's a great way to to, to hang out with us you know and the show is a couple hours you know and now i really have my second win so who knows how long um okay good you're talking stuff good good homes my homes my homes oh good you got a good audiobook recommendation oh nice oh yes Yes, the the Fabric of a Nation show in Boston. I'll be there. Oh, I'm so happy. That's awesome. That's so great. So, so good. Padma. Hey, Padma. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Four patch blocks. Oh, yeah. Four patch blocks. They're the, they're the, um, the silent killer. <laughs> Four patch blocks. And you know what else is really, is really a stinker, you know, is the quarter square triangle, the hourglass unit. I mean, how many of you? The chat's gonna flood with this. How many of you have just made like a zillion of the hat halves, right? The two triangles, right, put together. You just make them, you're like, yeah, great, this is great. But you can't do that, you know what I mean. You gotta do the opposite ones, the opposite on top, you know? You can't, you gotta, I have to lay each one out or I completely, I sew just 95 of one side of the thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hey, somebody did, hey. Mary Lou, Mary Lou, I'm so glad. Thank you for subscribing. That's, I really appreciate it. It's very encouraging to me. It's like a little boost, you know, when people, when people do that. And if you want to subscribe, it's $4.99 a month and you don't have to watch ads and you give me a thumbs up, which feels great. And uh, if you have an Amazon Prime subscription or if you're a member, you get one free Twitch subscription every month and you're on your own to figure out where you gotta go to get it, but Amazon owns Twitch. So they give you that, you know? Thank you, Jeff Bezos. Um, so that's really cool. So you can get an Amazon Prime subscription to the show for free. Um, okay, and Faith, hello, nerds, nerds, nerds. Wreaths, people are making wreaths. I like that, I like that. Um, Susan Michael, oh, it's nerd day. Yeah, it is, it's Saturn, Saturn nerd day. Um, Good, good, good. Hey, Angelo. Angelo Franco, I'm so glad you're here. There's a pizza place in London called Franco Manca. And every time I pass it, I go, Franco Manca, Franco Manca. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see. Okay, I gotta check out this YouTube chat too, but I gotta, my, my Twitch peeps, you gotta come first. Um, oh yeah, the write down, Jen. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I remember some, some names, but 
it's 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 touch and go you know um yeah discord we can talk about that elizabeth is here dana is here hello myra's here yay bip is here yvonne's here we know marianne marianne you've been making quilted pouches all day look i mean <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. Light, I was going to say this is light content. And and it is, except the Carter family. You know, if you know about the Carter family, it's like, it's very poignant, that whole that whole thing. Um, Natalie's here. Hi. Hello, NDH. I think you're back. 61160 sounds like a Chicago zip code, but I don't know. Uh, SJ's here. Get your popcorn. Mm -hmm. Hey, P. Wallace. It's a first time chat from P. Wallace. Everybody welcome P. Wallace to the chat. I'm so glad you're here. So glad you're at the show. Um, it's The replays are great. I watch people on live stream and when I can't see the, the real thing, I watch the, the playback and it's awesome. It's great, but it is really fun to be here live. And thank you for um, being persistent with the chat. We set up some, some um, kind of annoying thing, you know, the two factor authentication stuff, you know, you don't have to have that when you have a YouTube Twitch channel as a creator, I can like not have those like locks in place, but it's, it's better for the show. It kind of keeps out, keeps out the riffraff. Um, okay. So good. So good. Excellent. Da -da -da -da. Ivana, you're so, so good. Um, okay. Elizabeth, I think I said hi. Yes, everybody's good. Everybody's here. Yes. Oh, the good, the talk to the uh, Quilt Guild of the British Isles. It went great. I'm usually, I think I usually come here and I'm like, oh, God, God, God. I'm stressed. And I was, but it was, it went well. Marianne said so. So it's good. Um, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Michelle Van Scrappy's here. Oh, I'm caught up. Okay. Now let me just see what's going on here with YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Laura. Okay. Kathy Klein. Hi, Kathy Klein. Mallory and Kathy and Marsha is in California and Laura and Jane. You're all on YouTube. This is great. I don't know if I got everybody. I don't know, but I'm glad you're here. Okay. So we've done the intro where I tell you what this is about and we've done the hellos to the best of our ability. And now let's talk about what's on your screen. I like how I was like, I, I kind of made it so, you know, I was sitting with them. I love this photograph. Okay, so let me get small. Yeah, I'm small. Oh, now I really look like I'm sitting with them. Well, I think we should, we should have the guild meeting on the second Tuesday of the month. <laughs> You know, well, actually, part of the reason I love this photo, this photo is in the Library of Congress. And I, I just, I mean, it's a great picture, isn't it? And I'll, I'll read to you what the record says in the Library of Congress. But I mean, you know, the, one of the things, one of the things that bugs me about the, the way often, you know, people talk about quilt, quilters and quilt makers. I mean, there's this like ageism, you know, and I'm not a person who's like, who's going to run to the isms and the ists and the, and, you know, it's like, every, remember, remember Mary's whole take on like everything. Everyone's a disaster. Nobody knows anything. Life is chaos. Just chill, you know, like everything's a mess. And so just don't get, just, it's okay. Like you don't have to be angry at everything and you don't have to be, anyway, my point is, I said that terribly. My point is the, the, the thing about, you know, quilters being like old ladies or, you know, that, that only old ladies make quilts or something. It's like so offensive, you know, because like, first of all, it's, it's not true, but even if it were true, why is that a bad thing? Like, why is, you know, it's like, oh yeah, quilting's like something grandmas do. It's like, you should be so lucky to have a grandmother who's making you a quilt. Okay. Because the grandmothers, the women, like the women at this table, okay, sitting here with me, hello, they're the backbone of the damn country. And, you know, every corner of the country, right, every, from coast to coast, you know, in church basements across the nation, <laughs> and in other, you know, on front porches and all that stuff. The women, you know, in these families and who are making these quilts and everything, and who've done it for a really long time, I mean, who's, who's there with a casserole, 
You know, when you when you need help, who's going to, you know, take care of stuff when everything's falling apart? It's them, you know, it's them. And and so I love this picture because they're just doing life, you know, and they're clearly quilt makers. And that's like a church quilt sale that I can see the price on one of them is eighty dollars. That's pretty good. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I just it's like, oh, you know, quilts are made by grandmas. It was like, well, yeah, <laughs> a lot of them are. That's because people who, you know, people who want to comfort you and like make you something that will give you life, you know, are often women <laughs> who've like lived some life. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so I have a lot of energy, but that that tiredness might, <laughs> might poke through a little bit here and there tonight. Ah, I'll do my best. But okay so oh no Marcia has the wheel of doom i can only see a little bit of the youtube chat well okay anyway not... hey Neflinster's here hey Neflinster. um oh yeah so Neflinster says there was just a discussion of this assumption that only old people do fiber crafts on a knitting facebook group this morning well you know there's so much to say about this and that's what this show is right we chat we talk about it um <laughs> um and and oh great well that's great that's great oh yeah that's great okay sorry um uh yeah i mean the modern quilt guild you know if you know if you know about quilts uh you know that the modern quilt guild you know which came into the game like 2009 ish 2010 um the modern quilt guild uh which sort of begat the, mo the modern quilt style, whatever, you know, this was, this was largely, you know, uh, young mothers and, you know, like the 30 year, 30 year olds, 40 year olds kind of, and, and now it's the demographic for modern quilt guilds and people who make quilts in the modern style, you know, it's everybody, right? Um, quilt guilds look like, like, you know, they look, they look, um, uh, um, very varied you know like there's young people and people who are are maybe retired or whatever in all kinds of guilds modern and not uh but you have to think about too something that i i think people forget is like because so many people started making quilts the people who make quilts now so many people started making them in the 1970s the bicentennial the you know there was a lot of reasons uh, in the 1970s that people got interested in quilts again um, in large numbers. And when those people started making quilts, and maybe that's you, you were young women, right? I mean, if you were making quilts in the 1970s, you know, and you, you got excited about quilts like so many other people did, you were, young, you were, you know, in your 30s, right? You were young mothers. You were, you know, that age. And so, you know, the people making quilts now who are retired or whatnot, I mean, it's just, it's like, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense that this uh, quilt making thing is always um, considered an, an old lady thing. And once again, and then I'll get off this, uh, this pedestal here, this um, high horse, whatever, mixing my metaphors, I'll get off this high horse pedestal. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't be so, so terrible if quilts were made just by old ladies. It's just, it's just ageist and annoying. So I love this picture because they're like, I don't know, salt of the earth, man. And they're terrifying. I mean, let's be honest. I don't want to, I mean, especially this lady over here, she just looks like she's going to She's going to take care of things. And I'm sure she was very lovely still, whatever, wherever she is now on this earth or beyond it. You know, good woman, but do not, do not cross her. You know, I just, I just get a little bit scared. This woman, however, I mean, the woman in the middle with the apron on, she has an apron on. She has an apron on. I love it. Um, let me just make sure I can, uh, I think, you, yeah, you, you can see the whole picture pretty much in the screen. Sometimes I have to, uh, to do this, but, um, yeah, you can see pretty much the whole, the whole thing. I love, I love her. I love her glasses. I love her rings. There's so many. I love her earrings. I love this little, this little napkin holder because it looks like dried spaghetti. 
and that's that's interesting. I love the styrofoam cup in this picture. I just noticed this. I've never zoomed in on this. That looks like some kind of shredded meat <laughs> roll. It's just great. Okay, now I should actually read you where this comes from. Whoop, sorry. Nope, nope, nope. No, you can't look at that yet. That is like, it's gonna blow your mind. So I have to do this and do this. Yeah, okay, sorry. Sometimes I'm a human being. Okay. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I just need to calm down. I'm like, I'm fine. I did my makeup and everything's good now. But I don't know that that's really true. Okay. <laughs> don't do that. I don't want you to do that. Why do you have to? Why? See? Okay. Right. Yeah. So you come down here with me. Mm-hmm. Mm. Just everybody just enjoy. It's the two chat screens, okay? It's really freaking me out, but it's gonna be all right. That's, it's fine, Mary, it's fine, just chill. Okay, so this is a picture uh, taken in, mm -hmm, taken in, mm -hmm. well, it's Judy Griffey, this is left to right, Judy Griffey, Shirley Tyler, and Edna Turner at the Drews Creek Church Ramp Supper. Quilts hanging in the background are for sale. And yeah, it's kept at the um, uh, Library of Congress. And the year that it was taken, it's strange. It's not so readily apparent, but I, I will find it, I will find it. Hmm. It's weird. That's weird. That's weird. Um, it's part of the, there's a folk light, you know, the Library of Congress has so, so much material, of course. And, and, and when I'm looking for quilts in, in that archive, you know, so many of them, and I know there's so much that I haven't found yet, um, because I'm not, you know, I need to search for different things and I need to get more granular about what I'm looking for. But there's so many folk life collections, like Coal River Folk Life Collection, 1,979 items in that, you know, American Folk Life Center. Um, there was one like uh, Blue Ridge Folk Life Project, you know, and there are these collections of, of these photographs. Um, created slash published 1996. 1996? No, no, I don't believe it. That can't be. It says it's, I gotta get in the chat. What do you, do you believe that? Do you, do you think that that's true? Do you think that that's true? Hang on, hang on, I gotta catch up, okay. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, yep, a lot of young women in fiber arts and the, the pandemic, I do think, we've talked about this before, the pandemic has, increase the numbers of quilt makers or stitchers, fiber people, I think, in at least uh, the United States or North America and perhaps here in the United Kingdom too. I don't know about other places, but you know, I've heard a lot of people, you know, who bought a sewing machine during the pandemic because, you know, staying inside and, and sheltering in place. And, you know, it seemed like the thing to do, right? For a lot of people, because quilts are so, um, they're so powerful. They, they help us to um, focus. Um, they can help us relax. If you're not working on something that's really difficult, that makes you crazy, you know, you can relax while you're sewing. And, and um, yeah, so, I mean, Young, younger people, we may see an infusion into the numbers of quilt makers in America, a, 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 f a fresh wave of, of younger people. And by the way, I mean, if you're, if you're new here or if you didn't know, you know, the number of quilt makers in America, there's, there are, there's data, there are studies done every couple of years, quilting in America survey. And, you know, 18 million 18 million people who make quilts, um, some of them make a lot of them, some of them make just a few of them a year. And those numbers, I mean, even if it's, even if it's half that much, 9 million people who are like 
into quilting is a lot of people. It's a lot of people. So that there would be an infusion, you know, because of the pandemic, is, it's very exciting because they're going to find a lot of stuff out there if they want to look, you know, magazines and books and television shows and live broadcasts like this. Tell a friend. Um, hey, Kate. Hi. Hi. Um, Marianne made your, your first quilt at 15 in the 70s. Love it. Love it. How, you know, how old were all of you? I mean, throw it in the chat, you know, either chat. Um, how old were you when you started making quilts? I would really like to know that, you know, just kind of a roll of, of who, how, how old people were. Oh, you've started to do that already. Okay, good. Michelle started at 29 with your daughter 20 years ago. Ah, oh, I love that. I love that. So demented, made quilts in the seventies, but you were 10, you were 10 years old. A wee bairn. Uh, you made a bunch in the 80s, a few in the 90s and beyond. So demented, do you do you have your quilts from the 80s? You know how I feel about quilts from the 80s. Finally feeling relaxed. You know, I mean, I love, I love quilts from the 1980s. They are my favorites right now. Um, yeah, do they have bourbon in these styrofoam cups? I think perhaps. I think perhaps they do. What is this? Oh, what is this? Is this, it says Sam's, it's like Sam's Club. So maybe it, I mean, 1996, I'm going to have to keep poking around, but that's the, that's the year it says this, this picture was published and like recorded, but it seems so, it seems older than that. I mean, I would have said this was like 82 or something. I don't know. Okay. I gotta get in here. Um, a life in quilts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Nancy, thank you. These ladies couldn't have a credit card in their own name. Yeah. Maybe by, well, that's the thing about the year, but I see what you're saying and yes, and no. Um, so demented was eight. Hey, hey, hello. We have a first time chatter. I'm excited to see what they have to contribute. I really am. Um, uh, we've come a long way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Robin's late to the quilting game. You didn't start till you were in your mid fifties and you're 63. Now you made a few stuffed animals and clothing for your kids in the eighties and lots of embroidery and cross stitch. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Like I've heard that before too. I mean, and when people were making their own clothes, you know, and clothes for their kids, I imagine that just took all the time, <laughs> you know, making a quilt. It's like, yeah, I'll get to the quilt after I make more pants and things. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, yeah. Okay. So Caitlin, you were like, yeah, it's the nineties. It makes, from, it makes sense. Robin's like, yeah, it makes sense. But yeah, small town. See, I know Nancy. That's what I'm thinking. Exactly. Exactly. Padma. I, I'm seeing that, you know, published in 1996, but it just, yeah, 25 years ago. I'll check it out. Yay. Jay Dancer, you made it to a live. I'm so glad that you're here. And you have been following for ages and had all kinds of issues getting subscribed. I am sorry that that happened. Very sorry, but we, I am glad you're here and we are glad you're here and you're in, you know, like, it's like, it's happening. I'm really glad. Um, so let's see, let's see. Um, and Jaden sir says the clothes look like the church clothes. Yep. From the nineties. Yeah, I know homes. Okay. So, so let's see, let's see. <laughs> 34. Okay. I'm looking at this, looking at this. Mm-hmm. 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 Great. Yep. Great. 72. We've got a nice, we got a variety here. We've really got a variety here. And Yovana, I saw your picture in the discord. Did, did everyone notice how de like devastatingly beautiful Yovana is with her machine that her husband painted for her? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Amazing. Uh, 27, 21, 23. Great. 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 Love it. Great. Okay. So there's much, okay. I, oof, I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss some stuff. Hey, okay. And it's first time chat from Lauren. People say hi to Lauren. I swear I'm going to move on to the next thing here, but yeah, this is how it is. And it's just a good time. Um, Lauren says I've come back to my sewing machine as of last year. And, uh, Lauren says, I recently finished, uh, finally finished a quilt. I started eight years ago. You started sewing as a small child, but you never finished anything. I mean, Sometimes I think people try to, you know, they want younger people to sew, make quilts, but like, 
to me, a quilt maker who's younger, you know, it's like 30s, 40s. Because when you're young, I mean, you don't want to sit still and you're trying, you're starting a family or you're building your career or you're doing both, you know. And so, I mean, you couldn't, I didn't start making quilts till I was 28. And that's like kind of on the younger side, like on, in, on average, you know. I mean, I was busy making trouble and I was up to no good. I wasn't ready. To, I wasn't ready. And then I was ready. I was really ready. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bridgewater Arena. In, no, Bridgewater in Virginia. Yes, yes. Val's here. Excellent. 80s. I know, church ladies. So I'll, I'll, I'll take a look here. I mean, I'm looking at the record. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up and show you. And, uh, and let's just see, you know, because I've looked at these records, you know, a lot in, in, my, in my day. So here it is, you know. But frankly, I mean, a quilt costing $80 is kind of a, that's kind of a clue too. I mean, do you think it would have, see, look, look, created slash published 1996, you know? Yeah, 1996, y'all, that's it right there, 1996. So, I mean, half of you are like, oh yeah, that makes total sense. And some of you are like, eh, but... I saw a couple comments that like, look, if it's a small town and, you know, people are just hanging out and doing their thing, you know, it's not like Edna and Judy and Shirley are not like fashion plates, right? Uh, necessarily. They're, like I said, you know, the ba being the backbone, they're like busy being the backbone of like their town, right? Um, Ramp Supper at Delbert Church. I love it. Okay. So it does seem 1996. So I'll put this link in the discord notes. Uh, so you guys can check this out. Y'all can check this out and, and look at things. Okay. So gonna have a chip and I'm going to launch into what I have now. There is a lot to do. I can't, I, don't, I just can't do that yet. Okay. So I have this, this stuff about the Carter family and that's the meat of the show. But I found three other amazing things that I have to show you. And there's, there's just like little things. Um, the first is on the last show, if you all have seen, I mean, did you, if you all saw the last show, you witnessed a moment, a moment when I was like, you know, that's, and that's what this is all about for all of us to like go, Ugh, oh my God. Um, I saw a quilt with you all when we were flipping through that thing. You remember we were flipping through that magazine together and we saw that quilt, this quilt, but it was, it was a black and white picture. So I thought it was a black and white quilt, but this is the quilt. It's red. It's red and white. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Yes. You will be invited to the discord. Yes. You will be invited to the discord J dancer. We will make it happen. Please people do not let me forget to talk about discord stuff before the show ends, okay? Yeah. But how about that? How about that? And and I mean, this if you didn't see last the last show, you just got you just got to watch it. It was a really really fun show. And this magical, magnificent quilt which was made by Elizabeth Hamilton um in Elizabeth Harding, sorry, Elizabeth Harding in 1934. It's called the Teaching Quilt. Not a great photograph. It's pretty low res, but you can see, I mean, are you kidding me? It's two people on a seesaw baby. So it's like, you know, it's a baby quilt teaching, teaching, I know, teaching little shapes, shapes and things. Look, there's a fish and there's a beer bottle <laughs> and there's shoes and stars. I mean, I feel like the people, the person who made this, Elizabeth Harding, she was awesome. Like she was literally cool. She was like a cool person, a, a hip sort of like life of the party, fabulous person. She's got high heels in here. You know, she, the, look at this. She's sort of, you know, this figure is sort of fetchingly sort of side saddle on the seesaw. 
you know, this is clearly sort of like a lover thing. And there's a there's a baby now. So it's sort of, you know, sort of sexy, right? right. And, and there's a tree and scissors and a lamb and then all of these letters. I mean, it's just awesome. It's just, this is why we care about quilts because they're not just pretty blankets. They're, they're, they're so interesting and they have so much to tell us and so much to offer in terms of inspiration and just excitement. I mean, obviously the show is called Quilt Nerd because I am a nerd <laughs> for this stuff. And I'm like, oh, ooh, look, a seesaw on a quilt. Like, yeah, because it's great. It's really, really fun. And it's baby with an exclamation point. Thank you. Thank you. It is so, that you're so right, Bridge. You're so right. It's baby with an exclamation point. What is the size of the quilt? It makes it look like the motifs are so tiny, Padma's saying, but how do you do those cow and horse legs? Okay, okay, yes, good question. I don't know because it didn't say in that copy of the Clarion magazine we were looking at. By the way, is Dee Marie here? Dee Marie, are you here? Um, hey, Jinxie. I'm trying to catch people as they come in. It's so, it's so good to see you. Um, Teeter totter, yeah. Uh, it didn't say Padma in the magazine and it didn't say here. And I found this picture when I, I Googled, you know, Elizabeth Harding, cause it had the name of the maker in the clarion uh, and it's had the title. So I just Googled Elizabeth Harding teaching quilt and found this. And I think it, it's at the museum of American folk art, right? Because you remember this, this particular crop of this picture. Now we're quilt detectives, right? Because you remember, okay, the, the picture I had on the screen last time, that wonderful silk confection, the full picture of that had the same color meter thing, right, at the bottom of it. So, and it was that they were both in the Clarion. So it's the American, the magazine of the, the American Folk Art Museum or whatever. So it's it's got to be in their collection, but I didn't find it, you know, like in a searchable database or anything. So... I, I just, I don't know. I wish this quilt was in the Fabric of the Nation exhibit, you know, but they didn't ask us, so that's fine. It's really great. Oh, good. Hey, Dee Marie. Um, so that is what I had there. There's that. So that's one of the things. Let me check it off the list. Elizabeth Harding quilt. Check. Then, then I found this. Okay, we're going to go, we're going to exit full screen, and then we're going to come back to our preview screen and we're going to hang out there for a while. Okay. Edna, Judy, Shirley, just keep us, keep us, keep us company. Okay. Look at this. Look, look what I've got. We're not going to look at this tonight, but I just had to share it because we're going to look at it later. And it's amazing. In 1998, almost the same time that our ladies were having their coffee, um, man-made African-American men and quilting traditions. It was an exhibit at the Smithsonian Anacostia Community Museum in 1998. And that's very cool because I've never, I've never come across this. I think this looks amazing. So yeah, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I, I don't want to just find that and be like, oh, wow, that's really great, you know? And then like, look at it and, you know, just have that information in my head and then maybe forget to go back to it eventually, right? Or learn about it and be like, and, and it'll become just something like I, I know and mention, you know, in conversation with somebody else, like, Hey, did you know this? And there was, there's a show called dope sick on Hulu. And I don't know anything out about it, but he found some article in this magazine garden and gun. I don't know. I mean, that's, it's a very evocative title for a magazine. Um, and so he was looking at that about this show Dope Sick because apparently there are a lot of quilts in that show. Like there's a lot of quilts. Have you seen it? Oh no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did something go, did something happen? Did something happen with the, <gasps> oh no. Hello, hello. Oh dear. Oh boy. Um, can you, can you hear me? Can you see me? Hmm. Are you there? Are you there? Please. I hung up for you. Oh no. Ag. Okay, I'm here. You're back. 
Was there a blip? Was there a blip in the... <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to panic yet. I'm not going to panic just yet. It's back. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Sometimes, oh yeah, Whew. <laughs> the viewer the viewer count dropped down very, very low. Um, a 90 second blip, okay, okay. Went black, then came back. Huh, YouTube, okay. Oh, I got really hot, I'm like sweating. Yeah. Okay, okay, 55 viewers, okay, mm -hmm. okay. I will just wait just a, a, just a few minutes here don't have sound hmm okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do the okay you're on twitch and you're back I'm gonna do a quick be right back screen and check something with Eric hang on we'll be right right back okay <laughs> Okay, I think we're good. I th okay, Mike is on. Um, and Eric and I did a little, um, <laughs> we had a little meeting, we had a little tech meeting. And I think that it's probably just, I mean, it's, it's probably this new YouTube, you know, trying to get the YouTube and the Twitch, you know, together, but we have a very strong internet connection and it seems, you know, I mean, it didn't, it didn't end the stream. So I'm sorry that happened. Um, it looks like <laughs> Myra, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yes, yes. It, it, Myra says, at least we're here together freaking out about Twitch and Mary. I'm going to cut some fabric while we're at it. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, that worked. Okay, looks like maybe refreshing, refreshing the whatever you're watching on. Um, and okay, Stark Raven Wild. Hi, Stark Raven Wild. I'm glad you're here. Glitched, but it cleared up. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Gosh, yeah, refresh your Twitch page or your YouTube page if there's still uh, trouble. Gosh, I hate it. It, it's such a terrible feeling because it's like, you know, every muscle in my body just gets very tense and I get very scared. And there's like not, there's so little I can do about it. I mean, if there is, you know, then I got it, you know, then I am freaking out for good reason because I need to fix this or that. But that everything here seems to be okay. It is kind of amazing that this happens at all. It, it's amazing. I'm in London. Isn't that crazy? I'm in London. <laughs> and I mean, I just, I don't even know. It, oh, Eric, 
he he's um, he got his ham radio license uh, in the United States, and he just got his certification here in the UK. I'm really proud of him. He only missed two on the test, so he's kind of he understands a lot of the, you know, like fibers stuff, you know, bouncing off the ionosphere. Well, not the fibers, but you know, the radio frequencies and the electromagnetic waves and things, all of that that we need to make this kind of thing happen. He, you know, he's he's got his ionosphere facts, you know, in his mind, and I help him study. So I, I've been reading about the ionosphere too, but. You know, it's just, it's bananas. I don't know how any of it works, or I can't believe any of it ever does work. So I'm kind of waiting a little bit. I'm seeing that people people do seem to be back. Um, people do seem to be back. Okay. Yeah, more, yeah, yeah. He's He's got, uh, it, well, Eric's not doing Morse code yet, but he's, that's next. He did the foundation test, and then now intermediate comes, and then like, the other stuff comes. Um, hey, everybody. Thanks for saying congratulations. I'll tell I'll tell him. Um, thanks, Soda Mented. Man, thank you. Thank you, thank you. The stream did not end. Okay, thanks, Marie. All right. Okay. Um, and thank you to all my YouTube folks who are over at the YouTubes. I'm really glad that's working. <laughs> I, I mean, it is, it is, it is working. <laughs> Um, okay, so where were we? Let me show you this this little thing that I found. Um, what I was saying when the when we were so rudely interrupted was that Eric sometimes when he gets bored doing his stuff, he will uh, he'll hunt around for quilts. You know, it's fun. You just go down the rabbit hole. You know, you let your fingers do the do the walk in and and so he'll look for this or that. A lot of times he'll he'll fall into the rabbit hole when he's looking for an exhibit that might be going on, like a quilt exhibit. He's a very thoughtful guy. So he'll be looking for something that that we could do or somewhere we could go to see quilts and and then from there, you know, you find some artist or, or you find some museum or something like that and then you find some archive and so you start to find really wonderful stuff, you know, wonderful quilt content. And, and, uh, and so he, he discovered that there's a show on Hulu called Dope Sick. I didn't have enough time to, to look at that really, but apparently quilts, quilts appear a lot in this show. Um, do you, have you seen the show? Do you know about that? Um, and so, <laughs> oh, good. Jay Dan's here. I'm so glad you're here tonight. Um, and so, yeah, so it's a, so apparently, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Holmes, there's a Sanford Bigger show in London. There is. That's a big deal. That's huge. I didn't know that. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. <gasps> wow. I have never seen his work in person. I've never seen it in person. I've only seen it online and like that talk about a rabbit hole like oh my god that's amazing okay anyway i will take a look so okay so so you have you've been watching dope sick some of you have been watching dope sick and there are um there are quotes in it apparently well so anyway so so eric uh is looking at it um w was looking at that great homes oh hell yeah, hell yeah. marianne you and i should see the sanford bigger show together if you want to um, and he found this article about the, the show Dope Sick in this magazine called Garden and Gun. And so I think I went to find it and I did not find an article about, about, about um, that show, but I found another article about a quilt. Um, and it was this and it just looks so interesting and and i mean it was right before i had to get ready and so i was like ah that looks so cool i'm just gonna keep the tab open and share it with people so i told you you know that there were these three quick things i just didn't want to wait to tell you and so it's you know we did the man-made exhibit at the smithsonian african-american men in quilts had to throw that out to you uh the elizabeth harding quilt that's actually red and white that was the thing and now this thing. So a crackerjack quilter follows a pattern of Southern storytelling. I mean, this, 
this is a great picture. I mean, that, I mean, this is a great, you know, that's great editorial because you really want to take a look at what this is. Um, <laughs> it's on the Discord. Oh, great. Um, great, 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 Marianne. Um, oh, Appalachia for the, for the dope sick show. Great. Oh, I gotta be small again. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's a great, it's a great magazine. Yeah. Garden and gun. I've just never, I've never heard about it. <laughs> we are cool. So this is a great picture and I just don't know what this is all about. She's okay. So she's making quilts there and that's a, a hand. That's a big hoop. Wow. Look how big that hoop is. That's crazy. It's crazy. And this must be her work up here. Very interesting. You know what, by the way, I really like, the style of hanging pictures midway up the wall or midway down the wall. Do you do this? Have you seen this? Have you seen it done? My neighbor in Chicago, who's just a ridiculous person in so many ways, fascinating. Um, I just have to tell, I won't tell you her full name, but Barbara, her name's Barbara. And she's like, you know, she, bouffant hair, big glasses, you know, sort of a debut she had a coming out party when she was 16 in Chicago her father was like a very famous uh radio announcer or something like that she's probably she's probably in her late 70s and she she talks like this rah, rah, rah. she's kind of rude and anyway <laughs> and she has this apartment she's on the same floor as we are and and her apartment is just like there's a lot of like Fabergé eggs and you know she's just lots of chintz ruffles. And I mean, you know, I mean, she's just kind of of a different time, you could say in a way. Um, and she does this. Her, her, her apartment is very tastefully done, you know, not my style, but I mean, she's, she lives alone. She, <laughs> by the way, I told her, I asked her once, cause I, I really spent time with her, you know, for a while um, before we came here. And especially during the pandemic, you know, people were like, you need to take care of your elderly neighbors, check in on them. And so I got groceries for Barbara and, you know, I, she liked her frozen pizza the way we made it in the toaster oven, you know, the, the big toaster oven. Uh, she doesn't, I mean, she couldn't, she could hardly unwrap the pizza. She's never cooked, you know, herself, you know, she's just, she's this fancy woman. Uh, and she really liked the way we made the pizza, the frozen pizza. So she would put a pizza out by our door and then I would take the pizza and cook it and then put it by her door because we didn't see each other, you know, especially because she was older, no COVID. We didn't want to get sick. And and so we got to be close. And anyway, I asked her once, I was like, well, Barbara, you you know, you were married twice. Um, I think she she buried both of her husbands. I think, maybe, no, no, the first, the first husband they separated and the second husband uh, passed away some years ago. But I said, well, what are, what's your advice, you know, for a, for a married woman? Do you have any advice for me? Because she's older than me, you know, so I'd like to know what she's learned. Another reason why grandmas are awesome and women who are older are like great because you can ask them questions and, and maybe they can give you some wisdom. Anyway, I was like, Barbara, do you have any like marriage advice or like, what did you like being married? And, and she was like, oh, honey, I wasn't any good at being married. I was always screwing around. <laughs> so <laughs> I was always screwing around. I wasn't, uh, yeah, she was like, Ugh. so that's, that's Barbara anyway, but I like this style. <laughs> I like this style of, of hanging pictures midway. Yeah, Marianne, you knew, you knew I was going to talk about Barbara. Um, that's her. It's art collector decor. Okay, exactly, Holmes. That's it. Hey, Jill. Woohoo. Dunkaroos indeed. Yes. Dunkaroos. Hell yeah. What do you have? What's your beverage? What's the beverage choice with a Dunkaroo? Tea? Coffee? Rum? I don't know. <laughs> so Demented has her pictures at at mid level or eye level because she's she's five one so they're low they're low yep yep so this all makes sense that i'm describing barbara and it's like yeah she's got a lot of art and she's you know she's got yep yep and she's very small she's like a bird you know tiny anyway okay so let's take a look at who this person actually is who is she 
Uh, a Cracker Jack quilter follows a pattern of Southern storytelling. Okay, so um, I'll just skim this a little bit. I, I like to keep things very visually nice for you, not just have too much scrolling text. So this is Kathy Fussell, or Fussell, F-U-S-S-E-L-L. -L. When Kathy Fussell first started sewing, her hands were barely coordinated enough to hold a needle. She was only four years old. That's a theme. We're talking about how old people are today. Today. But the following year, she attended her first quilting bee. So she was five. Okay, she went to her first quilting bee when she was five. Every woman in her family sewed. Okay. Now Fussell, rain, Fussell re, reigns as a grand dame of quilting, following an idiosyncratic and distinctly southern muse. Uh, she was born in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Quilts are mm -hmm. okay. Uh, she says she in her mission statement she says quilts are feminized and devalued and uh, this is part of why she's so into quilts and quilt making now damn that is some detail let's take a look at this wow wow I mean wow so that's long arm right right well maybe not I mean that's some really intense stippling is that stippling no. Yeah. Is that stippling, y'all? Hey, Topher. Thanks for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah. Yay, Dancer. It is kind of a New Englandy kind of deal, right? A little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Meandering. This is meandering. It's really, it's really very, very thick, right? Very, uh, very, yeah, dense. It's very dense. Yeah, stippling or meandering. Okay, cool, cool. So um, this is, and that quilt was based on Mississippi River maps. That's awesome. I like the map quilt thing. You know, it's different people do it different ways. It's, this is not the first time I've seen it. You know, the topography kind of deal. Um, that's, it's, it's cool. I, I, I'm into it. Um, oh, no. No, 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 no. There it is. There it is. This is our drinking game. Every time you read someone write, these aren't your granny's quilts, right? This, I mean, really, my friend Mary Kate and I have always, we've joked for years, and she was in publishing as well, quilt media publishing, and, and we joked, we're like, we should really, there should be, like, you know, we should take a shot every time we read that in, like, the press. Like, these aren't your grandmother's quilts. Oh, these aren't your grandmother's quilts. It's so lame. It's so trite and cliche and just overused. And it's so, it's just stop, you know. But now that we have this community and we are together, <laughs> could we, like, I mean, maybe we should, I mean, should I have a bottle of something <laughs> I won't it's not my it's not I mean but I mean for a midwestern gal for a pasty pasty white girl from Iowa I can I can drink tequila yeah yeah the dark spirits I don't want anything to do with them no 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 but tequila I I'm good I'm good I'm good with it I'm just saying a little thimble like a literal thimble a literal thimble full of tequila every time we read those damn words. That could be fun. That could be fun. I think, I think we should all do it. I think we should have a spirit of your choice or just ginger ale or whatever. I don't know. And when we see it, because it'll happen. It won't happen all the time, but it will happen. And maybe part of my setup is some Patron Silver and a thimble. And we just, we just do it. We just do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We have great grandmother's quilts and grandmother's quilts and they're awesome. Ugh, anyway. All right. So, so this, this, uh, this is about this woman. It seems interesting. It seems interesting. Yeah. It was just one of those things that I was like, if I don't, I mean, I have a big, big file of this very thing, you know, of like these one-off articles and and things that I want to share with you but I don't know for some reason I I just wanted to show you now so I'll put that in the in the discord as always 
And that's that. Garden and Gun. I didn't know about that magazine. Never heard of it before. <laughs> um, so wait a second. We got to talk about this. We got to talk about this, uh, sh this drinking game. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's good, Jill. A dead horse. That is actually a good emote. I got to work on my emotes. I think, I think I can make some more. Um, it would be fun, Natalie, to do, to do a little tradition like that. It would be fun. SJ uh, has a glass of wine. <laughs> SJ waits to have a glass of wine until I start, like, really going off about quilt coats. I mean, I, I really am not going to do it for a while. For a while. But yeah, yeah. When I start talking about people cutting up quilts for clothes, SJ needs her wine. Same. Um, <laughs> wine might be better. Mm -hmm. And Yovana says, tequila... And I had a fight over 30 years ago, and you lo and I lost big time. But rum, Ivana, it's the opposite for me. Rum, oh my god, the f two times I like literally two times I have imbibed rum. I have never been sorry drunker or like sicker ever. I taste so delicious. I remember <laughs> that's probably why it was a problem, but not for me. So I'll have the tequila. You have the rum. We're good. Uh, <laughs> tequila makes your clothes fall off. Well, that's Quilt Nerd After Dark when we have those talks, you know, when we tell those stories. Add a quilt myth to, to the drinking game. Oh, yeah, it's, it's really true. It's really true. What size thimble? <laughs> Lauren, you're amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Batman slap. Okay, all right. <laughs> Ah, uh, ooh, he quilting juice. Is that what you're saying? Is, are you saying quilting juice? Part of my YouTube window chat is kind of cut off, and it's killing me because I think, I think quilting bug is, is saying quilting juice. It's either quilting juice or quilting something juice. But I like I like quilting juice. I think that's pretty cool. All right, so here's the deal, y'all. Here's the deal. When Eric and I, I'm going to pull up a picture that will make you all smile, probably. And, and listen, if you don't know about the Carter family, that's cool. You're about to know about them, at least a little bit about them. Um, I didn't know much about the Carter family until Eric and I were falling in love. And actually, he had moved to Chicago. And he is a big fan of American roots music, um, American folk music, which, of course, is white black, you know, everybody music, right? And he, and because of the, you know, the different influences and things. I mean, I am not an expert on American folk music, but let it be known, you know, these people and all of the people who were playing guitar and doing different slide stuff. I mean, it was just this wonderful melange of sounds and, and people and cultures down, you know, in Tennessee and Kentucky and Alabama and all that. Okay, so I'm not an expert on folk music. Uh, but the Carter family story is really, really interesting. And it's uh, it's interesting partly because they just, their, their music and the recordings of their music, um, they, were, they were some of the first people on the radio. Like they really, and they were a family kind of group. Um, and they... Yeah, they were, they were, um, I'm not an expert on the Carter family either, but you're looking at Ma Bell Carter, Maybell, Ma Carter, okay, A.P. Carter, okay, Dad, Dad, right, yeah, and then this is Sarah Carter, and Sarah is Mother Maybell's sister, so these are sisters, yeah, and A.P. is, was with Mother Maybell, and Johnny Cash, was married to June Carter Cash. And so June is, whose daughter? Who is June? But she's part of the Carter family. And and so Eric read to me a, a wonderful biography of the Carter family, okay? Marianne, Southern Comfort Marianne? My goodness. I love that for you. That's actually perfect. Um, <laughs> so, okay, Brit, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bridgewater in VA, Ken Burns Country Music Series is an excellent quick tutorial and talks about the radio thing. Awesome. Yeah. So 
when Eric was reading this book to me, and it was great, he read it out loud, and it was just so lovely, and it was just a wonderful memory I have of us just kicking back, and we read, you know, he read it to me. It was really great. I think maybe I was sewing, maybe we were just hanging out, and he was reading it to me, but it was awesome. And, and he read in that book. And I have this, I printed off a thing. Okay, I don't have, we don't have the book here in London, but I have printed out, hang on. Okay. The Carter family was recorded by this guy who was going through and recording, recording people, putting them, you know, on, on record, um, AP, this guy was was helping, going around and getting the songs written down, and and you know there was people trying to record things like for posterity and to keep them to keep the songs from going away when people died and all of that. But and there's people who were you know bad actors and all of that, and people who were good actors and all of that. But we're talking about like the 1920s, okay? And and when these when these people recorded for the first time I believe this guy took them to a room where they would record and he said when this guy peer heard them perform he invited them straight back to record upstairs where the walls were buffered with quilts a microphone hung from the ceiling and a scaffold with a complex system of pulleys and weights powered the turntable, rural electricity being highly unreliable. So it, so you guys are still talking about quilting juice. I love it. Good, because you're hopefully not too worried about my spotty Carter, early American uh, folk music kind of foundation ground I'm trying to lay here. But, but there, but there were quilts. Okay. In the um, in the recording sort of rooms, whether it was in a you know an, an attic, you know, or the, uh, an upstairs of a house, or or if it was in you know a barn or something like that, quilts were used to soundproof some of these rooms. And the it, Bristol. Okay, so let me get to some more pictures here. So the Bristol sessions. I think this is the session that they're talking about in this, in this, um, in this piece, uh, and in the book too. In 1927, they were recorded, you know, yeah, it was this first time they were recorded and there were quilts on the walls. Now I found this, um, picture of, you know, a book, some kind of, you know, writing or some kind of thing about, about this uh, moment. And I'll just tell you down here, um, these recordings, this is a quote from Johnny Cash, uh, who said, the Bristol sessions, these recordings in Bristol in 1927 are the single most important event in the history of country music. So, so this place where they recorded, yeah, okay, in Bristol, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is where they were hanging these quilts. So I want to know, I want to know where the pictures are of, of this because the Carter family and the yeah, the Bristol Sessions and just the Carter family story and the story of American country music, you know, um, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. And if the Carter family was recording music and if other people were in a room with quilts hung on the walls, I want to see that. And, and there, there must have been, there are pictures taken, you know, uh, at that time. I mean, you can see, you can see some of them. This quilt, by the way, I'm just, I'm putting this out there because... Um, I wanted to see, somebody said, uh, um, quilts are great soundproofing. Um, I found, I found a little bit about that. Actually, this is a quilt from an article, uh, on, on soundproofing at your home if you want to record stuff. <laughs> and, uh, it says, it, they showed a picture of this, of this, uh, uh, quilt and they said, um, 
moving blankets are like okay, but uh, they're not designed for soundproofing. Quilts and curtains created for this purpose are much heavier than non-soundproofing types. In fact, a blanket's ability to block sound is directionally proportional to how heavy it is. So if a quilt weighs so much that you can barely pick it up, most likely it'll do a good job preventing outside noise from coming through the window. So I looked up soundproofing in quilts and if it's a thing, and of course, you know, it can be a thing, especially if you have a very heavy quilt, you can use it if you're recording, you know, the Carter family in 1927. So I, I looked and I was like, there's gotta be a picture of the Carter family recording in this room, you know, with the quilts on the walls. And I gotta see it, I wanna see it, you know? And, oh yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. If there are pictures, they're going to be in the quilt, in the Ken Burns doc. Totally. And they exist, right? They exist. Um, and mm -hmm, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Sorry, quilts don't echo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, indeed. Um, here is this wonderful sketch. This is uh, something I found. I did not find a picture online, okay? Um, but I did find this wonderful little sketch. It's by uh, Frank M. Young, who drew it in 2002. And so he's drawn Maybell and Sarah um, recording with quilts on the walls, right? But I don't have a picture of it yet. So I wonder if he took this from from a photograph. I don't think so. I think this is an artist rendering of this. Um, and this is Sarah. This is Sarah Carter. And I like her story a lot because she's kind of, she's got this sadness about her. Sarah Carter did. And she didn't sing with the family uh, for a long time. And, and she had a, a, a love, a love story is kind of at the center of her, her life. Very interesting. But <laughs> This is where things get weird, okay? This is why I was so excited to get to this. So I, I can't find the Carter family uh, quilt photo yet. But I was like, I was thinking to myself, let's look at Sarah. She's <laughs> she's a little, a little, uh, little nicer uh, for the lead up for this. Um, I couldn't find the pictures of, of the quilts, okay. But I'm convinced and Eric's convinced too the Carter family, there have to be quilts that they made, right? I mean, you're talking about 1927, you know, 1920s into the Great Depression, but I mean, and they were really busy, you know, touring. I mean, they, they, they performed all the time and, you know, but it would make sense that they would have some quilts, you know, uh, maybe Ma Maybell, you know, maybe Sarah, certainly. I mean, so we just, I was like, I wonder if there's pictures of of them, you know, with quilts. And I just, I got on this thing, you know, I really wanted to find pictures of like the Carters and quilts. I just, I just really do. Um, and I, I found something pretty interesting. So, so this guy, <laughs> this is where we get into the drug thing. I mean, I told you at the top of the show, it was like, we've got Carter family stuff and we've got getting high on life. Let's put it that way. Um, this guy, his name is Harry Smith, okay? Remember, I'm learning all of this with you. So this guy is was an avant-garde, I'm reading you from uh, Newsweek, January 1999. Yeah, okay. Hey, Little Bird Stitch. Aw, oh, yeah, you gotta get a heavy quilt. You gotta get a heavy quilt, Little Bird Stitch. Um, exactly, Val, thank you. So Harry Smith is uh, an avant was an avant-garde filmmaker, beatnik polymath, and ethnomusicologist who died in 1991. Some of you may be like, well, yeah, Harry Smith. Not me. I don't know. But this is why we love quilts, because we learn about these things, right? So, so from Newsweek, 1997. Oh, and uh, by the way, what I have for you is a bunch of quilts from 1927. I, I just pulled a bunch of really beautiful looking, qu beautiful quilts from about that time period um, to show you. But I just, I have to get through these, these people uh, just, just briefly. Okay. So, so this is from Newsweek. Here's a story John Cohen. I don't really know who John Cohen is. Here's a story John Cohen tells about Harry Smith. 
the avant-garde filmmaker, beatnik, beatnik polymaths, and ethnomusicologist who died in 1991. In the mid-40s, Smith visited Sarah Carter, lead singer for the original Carter family and the first lady of country music. Smith photographed her quilts. <laughs> Sorry. SJ says, so many beatnik polymaths. Who can keep them all straight? <laughs> Excellent. Tequila, please. Lovely. Very funny. Wait, okay, wait, wait. <laughs> Let me just go back. In the mid-1940s, Smith visited Sarah Carter, lead singer for the original, I know, Bridgewater, um, lead singer for the original Carter family and the first lady of country music. Smith photographed her quilts, looking, her quilts, uh, plural, looking for correlations between names of patchwork patterns and rifles of Carter family songs. Riffle, it says, it says riffles. I don't know, is that a typo or is that right? I, I, there's more to this, but, but I have to know. She, he was looking for correlations between names of patchwork patterns and rifles. We'll come back to that, we'll come back to that. Okay, we'll come back to that too. Rifles of Carter family songs, riffles. Just that. Hey, Christmas. Hey, I'm telling you, man, this is, this is good stuff. So rifles. Yeah. Riffs. That's what I thought. Riffs of Carter family songs. Okay. Exactly. Okay. We'll go with riffs. And if rifles is right, then I learned something tonight. <laughs> Smith photographed Sarah Carter's quilts, looking for correlations between names of patchwork patterns and riffs of Carter family songs, such as diamonds in the rough. These quilts that you're seeing are not Carter quilts. They're just quilts from 1927 and the years around that. Even to Cohen, a folklorist, filmmaker, and musician, it sounded a bit arcane. Okay, so he's like, weird. Still, this was Harry Smith. He'd compiled the nation's most influential collection of traditional song. Okay, so this is our beatnik polymath, right? The 1952 Folkways Anthology of American Folk Music. Okay, the six record set, Bob Dylan and everybody else in the 60s folk scene knew by heart, okay? So this, this guy, this beatnik dude with fabulous glasses and, you know, he did this whole, you know, he was like the guy who was putting all this stuff together. Are you following me? I know I'm like jumping around, but this is insane. Okay, yes, and I'm gonna show you those quilted skirts. So he, he, he compiled a six record set called the Anthology of American Folk Music. This guy, Henry, Henry Smith in 1952. So this was, and Bob Dylan and everybody else in the 60s, this was what they were all about, okay? Okay. And this was, this was the one picture I could find of the Carters where quilts were, I mean, quilted things were involved when I was like doing every Google search I could possibly do to find the images of the Carter family and quilts, you know, the quilted skirts. I was like, hey, it's something, it's something, okay? There's June, June Carter Cash, I believe, and Ma Maybell back there. Ugh, I wish I could just play their music under this whole thing, but copyright, you know? So, so, so then this last little bit, Oh, and then this, this picture, this is what starts the series of quilts in the 1920s. Cause I was like, I want to find pictures of, you know, quilts in the twenties, at least we can look at those. And so this picture is of a, a, a woman who made, um, a quilt for the red cross after the, a big flood in somewhere in 1927, there was a big flood. And this picture was taken in 1937 but that's her quilt that she made in 1927. Okay, here's some more 1927's quilts. So later, back to this Newsweek article, I've got one more thing from it to tell you. This writer says, later, Harry Smith began talking about his extensive psychedelic experiences. Where did you take, where did you first take peyote? Cohen asked. Harry Smith said, on the road to Sarah Carter's.
So he's high on peyote, this guy, when he's driving to Sarah Carter's house to look at her quilts and, and, and ask her about, you know, if her songs are like connected somehow to her quilt patterns. What have we learned? Number one, Sarah Carter was a quilter. Uh, number two, Harry Smith took peyote, okay? And number three, Harry Smith was taking peyote, at least, at least on one occasion when he talked to Sarah Carter. Okay, but wait, there's more. Oh yes, isn't there always more? There's always more. Okay. So I'm looking at Harry Carter, I mean, <laughs> Harry Smith, okay? Looking at Harry Smith a little bit, trying to discover who is this person, right? Look at these wonderful quilts. You know what, and by the way, the, the, the thing that I love about this show, the thing that I love about it is like finding this stuff for you all and for, I mean, finding this stuff. I was like, well, I don't have pictures of Sarah Carter's quilts yet. We don't have pictures of the quilts that hung on the walls of these like country music early recordings in the 1920s and 30s, you know, Decca records and whatever. But I do, I can't, I have tons of pictures. I can find tons of pictures of quilts that were made at that time that would, that would set the scene for us, you know? And so because of this show and because I'm so excited to talk to you all and share this with you all, I, I go totally, you know, focused on looking at quilts from like 1925 to 1935. And it's this wonderful, there's, they're just so great. The ones I found, this is really interesting. This is, this is a quilt made in 1927. And it said, they said it was American and it's very, very interesting. I mean, it looks like a, it's appliqued and there's a couple um, close-ups of it. It looks like an East Indian textile or something. I mean, it really, anyway, but so, so, so I found this and we can look more at that, but I want the, these, these quilts from 1927 in particular, the ones that may have, you know, been in Tennessee and, uh, are just great. And like, when would I say I need to look at quilts, you know, specifically from 1925 to 1935 or so, you know, I, I wouldn't, but because of this, I have this reason to look at that one. Isn't that great? It's so great. Okay. So Harry Smith, I'm like, who is this guy? Right? Well, let me check in on the chat here. Mm-hmm. 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 Riff. Yeah. The riff. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Nerd moment for sure. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that at the top of the show, I was like, listen, my nerds tonight, is the night that like, I think we should, you know, I, I mean, I should, I want to ask you, you know, find those pictures, find, go down the rabbit hole, find the pictures of the Carter family or these recording sessions where there were quilts on the walls. I think it's, I think it would be amazing to find them. And I, I couldn't find them, but I wasn't looking, you know, deeply, you know, in these different archives and stuff. Google searches, even if you're good at Google, can only take you so far, obviously. But it would be just great. So if you can help find them, great. It's not an assignment. It's not like a, I'll be waiting, you know, but just like maybe, maybe you'll come across them. Maybe you'll find, I just love the idea of seeing American country music, you know, roots people singing in front of patchwork quilts that they may have even made. That's just awesome. I just think that's really awesome. Nerd mission. Nerd mission. Okay. This quilt looked a little bit to me like kind of seminal patchwork, a little bit, which is interesting because this guy, Harry Smith, um, here's a quote about him. I found out by reading a little bit more about him, he collected quilts. So this Harry Smith guy, who's whacked out on a peyote, who's hanging out with Sarah Carter, looking at her quilts, talking to her about them. He collected quilts. Okay. This American folk music, like the guy who made the 1952 anthology of American folk music that Bob Dylan was like all about, he collected quilts. He, he had seminal, but it was seminal patchwork quilts that he 
that he collected, I guess, okay? Again, these are just quilts from 1927-ish, not uh, his quilts, but this quote about Harry Smith, he liked to look for keys to the universal patterns that shape our cultures and the hidden realms of the unconscious. Okay, he's, he's uh, doing his, his 1960s kind of stuff. Okay, we know that. But some of what I read here was that his approach to, you know, music was that there are these fundamentals, right? These basics. And, you know, you put together these different fundamentals in all these different ways to get this these wonderful songs, you know, and this tapestry of songs made out of all these little individual parts and whatever. And he felt that way, obviously, about quilts, too, that quilts were these beautiful creations that had these fundamental pieces, you know, working together and, and making these these songs, you know, these quilts. And that was really interesting. So... Um, it says, <laughs> he spent many years, yeah, he spent many years analyzing the base phonetics at the heart of these different songs, noting repeated phrases and the recurrence of certain archetypes under certain historical conditions, like how many times the word railroad was used during the Depression as opposed to during the war. So he's really looking at American folk music in this particular way. And Smith took at this approach to all of his various obsessions, his beautiful hand-painted films, his collections of patchwork quilts, and Ukrainian Easter eggs. Da, 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 da. And he said, quote, I'm sure that if you could collect sufficient patchwork quilts from the same people who made the records, like Uncle Dave Macon, or Sarah Carter's houses, you could figure out just about anything you can from the music. Now, I know I've been jumping around a little bit. I mean, you know, Harry Smith, okay, American Folkways, you know, I've put a lot of pieces into play here. But I think that this is a very interesting little groove in the in the story here, you know, in the, in the big story of quilts, you know, in America, it's like, yeah, folk music and, you know, uh, folk ways, like, like, it's just that this person who's this, you know, what do they, what do they call him? <laughs> yeah, the ethnomusicologist, right? The ethnomusicologist, filmmaker, beatnik polymath, and quilt collector. Like, it's just cool. That's all. That's all. It's just cool. And these quilts in the 1920s, are cool and and right before I went I went on oh great Carol Hempel says there's pictures of old quilts and images of the Johnny Cash house hell yeah yes exactly he's equating quilts to music and I love that I love it I think it's very beautiful and it's very obvious right yeah totally very obvious and maybe this is not like you know, maybe it's not that surprising to some of you. It's not that like revelatory to some of you, but it kind of was to me. I was like, oh God, it's so great. You know, every quilt is a song really, right? And and now I'm like, sound like I'm taking peyote, but I'm not, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm um, have you ever done it? Never done peyote. Um, well, you know, Chris, Christmas, as someone with a bit of experience in these things, wink, wink, I can see why he was into the patterns. Well, the thing is, I have a little experience as well, and um, I, I told you, oh, oh, I've got Anna Williams in here, you all, because Anna Williams was born in 1927. I was like looking at different stuff. I was like, oh, when was Anna Williams born? Was she making quilts in 1927 yet? No, she was born in 1927, but that's a big deal for 1927 that Anna Williams, the great Anna Williams was born in 1927. Because, um, I mean, yeah, we owe a lot to her. Um, yeah, I have experience in, in such things as well. Not peyote. But I don't know if I can say this. I mean, I can say anything, but I don't know that I should say this. But, you know, the, the, the pattern stuff and, like, the sort of seeing, like, you know, the connection to, like, all the different things, uh, you know, music and poems and, and all of that. Like, I, I totally get it. Like, I've, I've looked at a few... Wait. What is this? What? Why? Okay. I looked at a few quilts, you know. How shall I put this? Deeply? I've seen, I've thought about quilts deeply. 
at different times in my life, special times. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Maybe I'm just excited that I, I found a drug and quilt connection. I, I found it. <laughs> I found it. I knew there'd be one. And indeed there is. And Harry Smith is our guide. And But right before I went, oh, oh, this is great. Okay. Okay. Right before I went on tonight, I found a video. I found a video. I, we're coming back to this. We, we have to come back to this. We have to come back to it because it's changing the subject. Let me show you what I found. Let me show you what I found. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Your feed is stopping a little bit here and there. Okay. <laughs> Last 20 minutes, there's a three. Oh no, really? Oh dear, Ivana, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing you're having a trouble with the feed. Oh, damn. <laughs> yep, okay, I'm really behind on the chat. Well, maybe that's kind of a thing is that like, the chat is a little bit pokey. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm just going to see if anybody's having trouble here. Doing okay. Yvonne, I hate that you're having issues. Yeah, I want to hang out with Harry Smith, too. Um, okay, here, here. Yeah, you know, Marianne, you're right. Mr. Smith did not disregard quilts as women's work, but things of value and inspiration. Thousand percent. Thousand percent. I think, yeah, I mean, I like this guy. I didn't think about that, but that's really refreshing, isn't it? Uh, he did not call them blankets, Faith. Indeed. Now, Yvonne is having a little trouble with the stream. The feed is kind of being weird tonight. Damn. Damn. I'm so annoyed at that. Um, okay, well. That's, um, I, rah, rah. Okay. Okay. Hey, okay, yeah, Quilting Nancy. Okay, so Quilting Nancy says there's a Carter General Store Museum in Hilton's, Virginia. Wonder if they have some of the quilts. Well, Eric, the Carter family fan that he is, he found Rita, what is, Sarah Carter's granddaughter is Rita Forrester. He found her, and, and I think she's still living. And, you know, she would have some. I mean, I'm not going to be like, hi, Rita, my name's Mary. Do you have any of your great grandmother or your grandmother's quilts? I'd just love to see them. But those quilts exist. I mean, I just think, you know, we love these quilts. It's like the red and white one we, we looked at tonight, Elizabeth Harding's quilt. There are these amazing quilts out there. And if Sarah Carter made a bunch of cool quilts, which we know she made quilts, they're probably amazing. There ought to be an exhibit, you know? There'd be, oh, wouldn't that be great? The Country Music Hall of Fame ought to do it. Anyway, we got to keep these things safe or they're going to just go away. And maybe Sarah Carter really wanted people to see her quilts. You know, it's part of her story. And she's a really interesting person who contributed a lot to American culture. Um, yeah. Okay. New Elizabeth made her, her, she lowered the quality of the stream. That is a very good idea. Um, yeah, it's probably the sink, you guys. It's the sink with YouTube and Twitch. Damn. Hey, Terry. And I have been, well, I've been neglecting the YouTube Twitch. You know, thank you all for dealing with this, with the tech part of this. It's so exciting to be streaming on YouTube as well, since some people do have trouble with Twitch. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it's the new thing. It's the latest new thing that we're doing with this show. You know, it's like the green screen, all this new stuff. Okay. Um, Okay, Dee Marie, it's working for you. Okay, so here, so here's, yeah, Country Music Museum, uh, yeah, Smithsonian in Bristol, yeah, where they where they were recording. Okay, so look what I found right before I was going on the show, right right before I was going live. I found something <laughs> on YouTube because we're all in the world of Harry Smith, right? And we're talking about Harry Smith, and we're talking about how he collected quilts and he took peyote, okay? And the quilts that he collected were seminal, okay? Seminal patchwork. We could talk more about what that is. I'm excited to learn about more about what that is, but I but I do know enough <laughs> to know what it looks like and what it looks like is what you're about to see. I found this I found this video that 
reads, the title of which reads, Number 15, Untitled Animation of Seminal Patchwork, 1965 to 1966. What does this say? It's uploaded by Brett Walsh. The only description that it has, Harry Smith. Okay, so number 15, Untitled Animation of Seminal Patchwork, 1965 to 1966, Harry Smith. This to me says that this is a creation of Harry Smith, this Untitled Animation of Seminal Patchwork. Okay, before we watch it, here is something that said, that's Patchwork. Okay, and there's the Harry Smith archives, which I haven't even gone into because I'm telling you I found this right before I hit the live button. But Harry Smith made art, okay? And <laughs> there's there was some talk or some show and they're saying about this thing, schedule includes a talk by Harry Smith archives director Ronnie Singh and screenings of <laughs> and seminal patchwork quilts. So what I think this is, I think this is Harry Smith's, it's, it's a film he made and it's animation of Seminole Patchwork. It's nine minutes. And from what I have seen, there is no sound. So it's gonna be a little bit weird. I don't think we'll probably watch the whole thing, but here it is. Are you ready? That's the spinning wheel of death but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I think we just need to, yep, yep, okay. I mean, now, if you've got them, you know, smoke them or whatever, play, play the Grateful Dead, play whatever. Here we go, let's just. Yeah. 1965 to 1966. I mean, that's the year this was made. And I believe, yeah, put on your Pink Floyd, man. I mean, listen, the next time I really, you know, sit, and think about quilts, perhaps for hours. Uh, I don't just think about quilts when I sit and think for hours. But when I do, this would be fun to watch if you get what I'm saying. But look at this. Isn't this amazing? Look at this. This film. I mean, is this... It's so cool. It's so cool. I mean, I don't even want to say anything because, you know, we could just watch it. Hold on, it's really cold. I gotta shut the window. That doesn't usually happen. I mean, you know, some really, I mean, yeah, music. Mm, turn on some music. Am I being inappropriate? Am I getting too weird? But you know what I'm saying. Kick back, you know? Listen to some some tunes, get out the beanbag, you know, just like <laughs> loll around and and watch this. But but in all seriousness, like it's a very interesting thing. And now that I'm watching, I mean, clearly this is Harry Smith who made this, right? And it's very artsy, and obviously it's you know it's very 1960, 65. But it's you know it's nine minutes. And what is he? What which quilts is he looking at here? Are they quilts in his collection? You know, we should totally look at seminal patchwork. Um, this is your quilt on drugs. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know he was listening to tunes a thousand percent. Yeah, it's Saturday night, man. It's all good. Um, indeed. So, so I just have never seen anything like this. That's all. I've never seen anything like this. And I want to know now if there are more like, you know, independent, um, not independent films, but like, um, yeah, art films that have quilts in them. And once again, it's just a very good example of why this content is great. And by content, I mean the quilt content. It's not that I'm so like obsessed with quilts that I like, what are their, you know, what are their art films were made in the 1960s that have quilts in them? It's not at that point even about the quilts. It's about the art films of the 1960s, you know, it's like quilts are really, they're just a really fun, like fishing line. You know, it's like y you go and you, you, you fish for quilts and 
because you know when you find them, you're going to find this cool stuff. I mean, I didn't know who Harry Smith was before tonight. I didn't know that, you know, he made a film about quilts, you know. I haven't thought about Seminole Patchwork in a hot minute. And, and it's just wonderful. It's just fantastic. I'm just so excited about everything. Rick Rack. I saw that Rick Rack, Marianne. I totally did. Oh, I can finally have a crisp. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Oh, yeah? Interesting. I bet you meant Jenny Doan. You meant Jenny Doan, right, Nancy? Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seminal patchwork. It's it's really neat. I I, I love watching this, and the, the film is so. It's so very nineteen sixty five. You know the quality of the film, right? Mm hmm. Mm. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. It was Misty Dawn. I didn't know. I didn't know she was doing. I'm really out of the loop on the industry stuff. Oh, you're crying right now? Like, really? Like, feeling the feelings? Hmm. Okay, Padma. God, you're so on the case. You're so always on the case. I've been looking, but um, this is Padma saying, I've been looking, but I can't find any photos by Harry Smith of the Carter quilts. But I did find an article that in 2009, Rita Forrester's home burned to the ground. <gasps> Oh, and she was the director of the Carter family fold, and her husband was lost in the fire. Oh, God. Wow. <clears throat> I'm so sorry to hear that. That is just... That's just awful. Yeah. Well, you know, this Harry... Harry... Um... Oh, my God. Smith... He, he did take pictures, right? Like, Padma, you said it there, and I don't know if I made that connection, if I shared that before, but, you know, you, you were saying you didn't find any pictures, you know, that Harry Smith took of Sarah Carter's quilts or any of the quilts, but they probably are out there because he was this documentarian. So, you know, on peyote or not, you know, he surely had a camera with him whenever, wherever he went, you know? And surely that when he was hanging out with Sarah Carter, right? Um, so they've got to be around. And this Harry Smith archive that I just pulled up and read to you that little tiny bit, um, that would be the place to go. Yeah, and so if you were a person, I'm cold. If you're a person who, I'm shivering. <laughs> now I'm hot, now I'm shivering, no kidding. Um, if you're a person who is like going to do a doctoral thesis, on, I don't know, music or quilts or w how cool of a project would it be to like seek out like all those photos and like, you know, the Carter family quilt thing, you know, I just think it'd be a really neat project because that kind of scholarship is super specific and super, you know, like, yeah, it's just it's academia is the place where you would go and and work on a project like that, you know, really get in deep to archives and pictures and tell the story of all that. And, you know, just because the world is very interesting, that's all. Okay, so this is the film. It's, it, it just, it, it's, it's, there it is. There it is. And I've got the drug quilt connection. Check. I knew we'd find it, Faith. <laughs> I knew we would. And that's, I'm, I'm sure that's not the only thing, but that's the first thing. Um, <laughs> Susan Michael says, yes, I have confirmed that you can indeed listen to Pink Floyd and look at quilts. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and Misty's Jenny's daughter-in-law. That's right. That's right. Yep. Um, okay, good. Yeah, Jenny Doan's memoir is good. Yeah, I really need to, I need to, I really want to read it. Okay. Um, yeah, and this is the back of the quilt, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. So he was flipping... He flipped it. He flipped it. <laughs> Great. Okay, so I think that, yeah, I mean, that's what I've got for you. That's what I've got for you. I mean, what else is there? <laughs> um, 
I think we've got the point here. Okay, we, we have, this is almost the whole film. There's a little, there's about a minute left or so. And that's cool. Um, so, so all the links in the Discord. Let me just see, what is this? This is the Harry Smith archive. I mean, visual, yeah. I mean, I, I have, oh, I was gonna play you my trailer. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I can't look at this kind of stuff now because it's what I've been doing all day. Can I play you the trailer? It's one minute long. It's one minute. Okay, so here's the deal with it. It's not finished. It's not finished, but I'm really proud of it. I have been working on it like crazy. It's so editing, man. If you know a film editor, hug, hug a film editor because like, damn, damn, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. So I'm going to play you because so on the Twitch channel and YouTube as well, but especially on the Twitch channel, you, I, on my channel page, there's space for a trailer, you know, there's space for like a preview. And whenever I open my Twitch channel page, it, I get a little alert. That's like, tell your viewers what your shows, what your channel's all about when you're not live, you know? And I've been on for like three months and it's like, oh yeah, you know, that's really important because if somebody goes and visits my page and there's, you know, it'd be great to have a little trailer to talk about the quilt nerd and what's this all about, you know? Well, I, I made one. <laughs> I, I'm almost done with it. I mean, I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm almost done with it. And is it going to be <clears throat> okay? to play you? Yes. Now you must know that it is not finished, especially the sound. Okay. The sound is, um, the sound is not done. Okay. It, so I've got to lower the music. The music needs to be a little bit lower. Let me see if I can uh, actually make it a little bit lower right now. I can. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to play it for you. It's not finished. Did I mention that it's not finished? It's not finished. And it can only be a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I said I was going to play it, so I'm just going to play it. Okay. Wait. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. 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 Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at, look at all this. It's so much work. It's so much work. Have you all done stuff like this? I mean, it's crazy. Look at, look at this. I'm using Final Cut Pro. I, I mean, ugh. okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to make it full screen. No, no, I'm not ready. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, you ready? Okay. Here we go. If Quilt Switcher's blankets, I would not be here. It's about exploration. One day, it's like a modern quilt. Or next show, we're going to look at like a quilt from 1726. You may not like it. You might not wear it. Also, he is very beautiful. This is beside the point. It's interesting to hear art people talk about quilts. Jeez. Oh, of course. Oh, we're going to oh, no. this astronaut who's a quilter. It looks like a hospital. <laughs> I have a green screen. It's ridiculous. Now we have to figure out how we would construct it if we were going to do this. Wow, I must be like a real twitcher. This show attracts like-minded people, but not necessarily people who have the same opinion. <laughs> okay, wait. Or no, yeah. I'm start talking about LSD. I told the story I shouldn't tell on the internet. George Washington looks a little bit like he's crying. That's a Liberty Bell. Of course it is. Oh, uh, there's a bug. Ah, my chair. You're gonna like the show. That that got me there at the end. I I told you the sound and everything. So and then I gotta put the stuff at the end about where to see it and I didn't realize I was in the I was covering it up. Oh god. Don't ever uh, just had to show you so but it's a little be fun right you know and I'll get the music down and yeah I, I see what happened and where it where it was <laughs> I I found yeah it, it's gonna be the music is just a little too high you know and I have to fix a couple things but I think it'll be fun and it kind of gives a sense of of what it's what it's like it's fun it's, it's fun. okay so I thought I would finish it today but it's just there's just always a million a million things. I mean, yeah, the sound adjustment and then something just didn't work. And anyway, okay. Well, thank you for, thank you for watching it. Um, and so that's, that's the show, uh, the discord, I promised that we would mention it. Um, 
what were we going to say? About it? We have a Discord. Um, it's uh, we have some different channels there. Um, I will put a link to the Discord in the chat right now. Yep, I'm going to do that. Let me open it up here. And um, if I missed, if you subscribed and I missed saying thank you, I really, really appreciate you. And I think there's a few bits. Myra, I'm seeing you, you there's, you're throwing bits around. What are these bits? I still am learning about what that even means. But I get a little alert here that says, you know, there's, Myra has used bits. And so I think that means I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome, and, and I, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Um, Sarah Crane has subscribed. Thank you so much, Sarah. I'm so glad that you did. Sally Quilt subscribed. Well, that was a couple days ago. Okay, well, it's it's in my feed, and I, and I am really, really grateful. Oh, man, I'm getting tired. You can hear it in my voice. So let me get uh, an invite here to the Discord server, and we have a lot of fun over there, and I put up the episode uh, links still haven't done the one for the tattoo show. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. It just, it's like, I, I just keep, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. It's like the weird task that you just suddenly have task resistance on that makes no sense why you don't get it done, but you just keep not getting it done. That's what that's like. Okay. Um, here's an invite. I'm pretty sure this is going to work. <laughs> so funny. Um, Jay Dancera says, uh, I think about the trailer, she says, if you weren't, if I weren't already a bona fide quilt nerd, it would have sucked me in. And the, the, the bot, you know, the, the chat bot that doesn't want people to say bad words, you know, it flagged the comment because it said sucked, <laughs> but I, I approve the comment. It's totally fine. <laughs> Because if you weren't already a bona fide quilt nerd, the trailer would have sucked you in. And that's exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, oh, okay. Myra used a thimble and was supposed to get to choose the topic of an episode. Wait a minute. Well, you do. You do. I set up the thimbles and I didn't know. I didn't think anyone would use them until I figured out what they were. Myra, I will be DMing you on the Discord, okay? And you will, you will indeed be choosing that. Okay. I am really apologize. That's very embarrassing. Uh, set up thimbles, forgot what they were about. Didn't really get them sorted and, and you were, and you, and you did it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it's, um, thank you very much. That's very cool. So I will, um, I will, I put the, I put the link in there, hop onto the discord. Chris says, great as always. Um, <laughs> in the short time that you've watched this stream, uh, uh, I've managed to tie almost all of your main interests to quilts. Once we get to baseball, you'll have completed them all. Well, Myra gets to choose the topic of the next show. But there's a lot about baseball we can talk about, too. So that's why you have to keep watching the show. Um, Myra, <laughs> I know. Well, we're going to get those thimbles working working for you. And I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Susan, there's a ton of baseball, ton of baseball. Um, y'all are amazing and I appreciate you a lot. And, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, I was dead dog tired, but this was a really fun show. Kind of, I had to, I had to think hard to get my words to work, but, um, I think, I think they did. And it's just, it's just fun, man. It's just fun. We just hang out here and we just have fun. That's what we do. So have a lovely evening and I don't have sewing on the schedule for tomorrow. I think I got it. Marianne always says, pace yourself, Mary. And I think, I think it's a good idea. I gotta, I gotta do some stuff. So, but you never know. I might pop on. I might just want to do a quilt nerd show because this is what I love. Okay. The discord's popping. I got to go because I got to put the episode notes up before everything falls apart. Hey, Terry Meg. Terry Meg, <laughs> we were just closing, we were shutting off the lights, closing the doors. So we'll see you on the um, replay. Everybody who's watching the replay, everybody here from YouTube, I'm getting better at getting the YouTube stuff worked out. So thank you. Uh, and thank you for everybody uh, uh, who had tech trouble. Appreciate it.